This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we get all Harry Potter up in this mother lover. by a car because of you. True, but look at you now, you're casting real spells. Yes, but that wasn't your plan. You just wanted to see me cry so you could put it on the internet. That would have gone so viral. Giving me your wand, Emily. That wasn't my wand. Time for some wizardly payback. What's that? It's my wand. You're not dead, I'm also. You're alive now, Corridion. You're an idiot, but you're breathing, I'm also. <sighs> yeah, well, I tried. Logo. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. So, how is everyone? You good? Good. And how's work? That's nice. And the family? That's great to hear. Okay, now that we're all cut up, let's make some reading of emails happen. Shall we? Let's. So I know how much you guys love the Harry Potter film. So do I. Do you think you could do a spell casting effect and the teleporting thing that they do? I'm new to this stuff, so could you make it as easy as possible? I do indeed love me some Harry Potter movies. So, so very sad that it's over, but it is. So I figured now or never with some of the effects and what Potter fan doesn't want to shoot magical zappy thingies in a video? It's the same after you watch Star Wars and you just wish you could Jedi someone in the face. Anyway. So, the first thing we're gonna be covering in these effects of Potterdom is the wand attack, or spell casting shooting wandness, which is my own personal name for it, which I just came up with just now. Okay, so each one we did is a bit different from the other, so I'll just be choosing one to show you guys how we did it, and that should give you an idea of how to make your own style of wizardy spell firing. And the one I'll be showing you is a this one. The key to these shots are just good compositing, and one of the biggest elements to that is to make sure that you're working in 16 or 32-bit linear. This will help your colors blend better without peaking so that you will have a much more realistic end result. But now that we have our 16 selected and our footage imported, it's time to get to work, and you'll be happy to find out that for this effect, we only used three assets and a lens flare. That's it. Since the email asked for it, we're trying to get this effect done as simple as possible while still making it look great. You shouldn't have given me any of that. But before we get to those assets, the first thing we need to do is to track our footage. And since this is only going to be about three or four frames long, I'm just going to do that manually. So create a null, then keyframe the position point, and then flip through about three or four frames and keep moving the position of the null box to be over the wand over the course of those three or four frames. Now that you have that, we will add our first asset, which the first one is a smoke charge. This is just to give the look of power coming off the wand after the shot. Now set this to add in the blending mode, then drop the opacity a bit and parent it to your null layer by clicking this little wandy and then dragging out oh it's parented now it's 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 godfather or legal guardian i don't know next i have a spark layer which is pretty much my wand's muzzle flash i guess you could say just scale and position this right over the wand tip change to add and parent it to the null now we have our final asset layer which is a fire layer and it looks like this 
So we took this layer, flipped it upside down, and added a curve to it to drop the brightness of the flames a bit. Then we added a glow and changed it to the add blending mode, and then turned on the 3D for this layer so that we could position it to make it seem like it's shooting past the camera. And finally, we parented this one to the knoll as well. So what we have now looks pretty good, but it isn't finished yet. It still feels like the effect isn't actually in that world. But what we added to tie this up nicely is a lens flare. So we'll flip that layer on and there you go. For this, we just changed it to blend mode and parent it to the wand as well so it follows everything else but as you can see it's really the flare that finishes off and fills out this effect we have a nice fogging that happens over the whole image which looks like it's coming from the light of the wand that's casting that light which gives it a really nice realistic effect last thing to do is add your final color correction which when compositing always color correct in the end never do your color correction first and then try to composite it doesn't really work well the final color correction does a lot to tie everything together in the end but now just add on your sound effect and you have you're casting spells in your friend's general direction. But now for things like this, or this, and this, this is all just compositing, very similar to what we showed you. It's nothing more than just the layering of assets to get the effect you want. And with all of these, the biggest key for me with each effect was just a lens flare, which we used optical flares for this, but another great plugin for lens flare would be No Light Factory. However, one of the other things that we did, which is always a good practice when shooting for compositing later, is to add some kind of practical effect into the mix while shooting. With this one, uh, for the last explosion that's supposed to happen right next to Emily, we grabbed some dirt and mulch and threw it at her the moment the explosion was supposed to hit, which looks really stupid by itself, but once the visual effects come into play, it works really well. So keep that in mind the next time you're making effects that are visual and not special effects. But hey, after a word from our domain buddies, we'll show you how a wizard gets his mail. When it comes to video, the internet is where it's at. I think cable is a dying animal, and for me, it's already dead. I've told you guys before, if I can't stream it, I'm usually not interested. So with that in mind, if you make videos of any kind and you wanna show them off on the web, what you want is a .tv from domain.com. It's a perfect domain name to start your online video site. With a .tv website, you control your content and look more professional than just having a YouTube channel. If you wanna showcase your work, get seen on .tv. Now here's what you do. Go to domain.com and search for the perfect.tv domain for your website. Then use coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout to save an extra 15%. Then if you need to host your .tv website, check out domain.com's hosting plans. They're less than six bucks a month and have everything you need to build, maintain, and promote your site. Remember, when you think domain names, think domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain, domain.com. I wish I were real. I would zap myself all over the place. Would never have to get up to get the remote again. That's not. But this is the end of the episode. We actually ran out of time in this episode with all the compositing we had to do for the opening sketch. We got a bit on the behindness. But lucky for us, we do two episodes a week now. So coming on Monday, we're gonna show you how to crack out this effect like a champion, like a champion of After Effects. But until Monday, you can jump over to my Twitter and say hi to me. Maybe give me uh, some digital flowers. We could take this relationship up a notch. And then check out our last episode of Film Riot, which is on coverage. And definitely check out Friday's episode of Film State. We have the trailers for both The Dark Knight Rises and The Amazing Spider-Man. I know. But I'll see you next time when I die and then my body gets used to create a super cop to clean up Detroit. <laughs>